Hey everyone, so this lesson is on heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, or HIT, or H-I-T. So we're going to talk about what this condition is in this lesson. We're also going to talk about some of the signs and symptoms, how we can diagnose it, and how we can treat it. So heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, we're going to look at the word thrombocytopenia first. So if we break down that word, thrombocyto, the prefix thrombocyto means platelets. Penia simply means low, or a low level of platelets. So thrombocytopenia really means low platelet levels. So heparin-induced thrombocytopenia is a thrombocytopenia occurring after heparin administration. And what we normally see here is that the thrombocytopenia occurs about 7 to 14 days after initiating heparin use. We're going to see that this is not always true, but for the most part, when we're trying to diagnose it, we use these particular numbers. We're going to talk about more about this in detail later on. So it is actually not incredibly rare. It occurs in about 5% of patients exposed to heparin. There's actually two types of HIT, or heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, and we're going to talk about both of those in the next slide. The one we're going to talk about more specifically is caused by production of antibodies to heparin platelet factor 4 or PF4 complex. And what we do find when this happens is that that antibody binding causes activation of the coagulation cascade. This can cause many other problems we're going to talk about here as well. So again, as we mentioned before, this condition can occur within 7 to 14 days, and sometimes you might see 5 to 10 days of heparin use, but it can occur sooner if heparin was used previously. So if the person has been exposed to heparin previously, they've developed these antibodies we've talked about. They already have the antibodies there, so it can occur very quickly after a second administration. So it can occur within very short time periods, within hours, if the same person has been exposed to heparin recently. We're going to talk about all those time frames later on in this lesson. So I mentioned that there are actually two types of HIT, or heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. The first one is type 1, so heparin-induced thrombocytopenia type 1. This occurs within one to two days after heparin administration. So you can already see that the timing is different than what we talked about in the last slide. This is actually just a transient thrombocytopenia. So you see a thrombocytopenia where the platelet level decreases, but it is only temporary. The thrombocytopenia then recovers even with continuous heparin administration. So what we do find is that when you start heparin, one to two days after you've started, you see a temporary drop in platelets, and then that platelet count recovers even when you're continually giving that person heparin. What's important with HIT type 1 is that there is no associated increased thrombotic risk. So we're going to talk about why this is important in the next slide. Now there is HIT type 2. This is the one we're actually going to talk about. This is the clinically significant heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. This is the one that when you hear heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, this is actually the one they're talking about. This is where we get antibodies against heparin PF4 complex. And it's also known as heparin-induced thrombocytopenia and thrombosis. So you might see H-I-T-T. And what we find is that there is an increased thrombotic risk because that antibody will activate the coagulation cascade, as we mentioned in the previous slide. So what are some of the clinical features of HIT type 2? This is actually the one that we talk about in the clinical setting. We do see venous and arterial thromboses, so both clots in the veins and the arteries. And it's not insignificant. Actually, up to half of HIT cases will have clots or thromboses. So with regards to venous thromboses, we see deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. So you may see a asymmetric lag. So this lag here has a deep vein thrombosis. You can also see arterial thromboses. These can be devastating. You may have a myocardial infarction, so a heart attack. You may have a stroke. So again, these can be devastating. We don't see this with HIT type 1. We see it with HIT type 2 because of the activation of the coagulation cascade. 
we can also see heparin-induced skin necrosis. It can look something like this. This seems to occur more likely when we're using low molecular weight heparin as opposed to unfractionated heparin. And you can also see signs and symptoms of thrombocytopenia. This is a thrombocytopenia, so you can see signs and symptoms of a low platelet count. So things like mucosal bleeding, so bleeding around the gums, bleeding from the skin. You can see epistaxis, so a bloody nose. You can see easy bruising. And you can see petechiae, purpura, and ecchymoses. So how do we diagnose HIT? So the diagnosis of HIT, or HIT type 2, is the four T's. So what are the four T's? The first one is time. And time, we talked about 7 to 14 days, but in this context, it is 5 to 10 days. The second T is thrombosis, or clotting. So this is often a new occurrence where the patient has no past history. The third T is thrombocytopenia, and it is usually a decrease in platelet count that is greater than 50%. And the fourth T is kind of a little quirk here. It is alternative. T in alternative is the fourth T, which means that another diagnosis is unlikely. These are the four Ts. So more specifically, here's more of the information that you need. It's based on a point system. So what we find, again, time, thrombocytopenia, thrombosis, and alternative are the four Ts. With regards to time, five to 10 days after heparin exposure, or one day after if previous heparin use in past five to 30 days. So again, we talked about this before, if there's a recent use of heparin, that person can have developed antibodies already. And if they have another exposure to heparin again within five to 30 days, it can cause thrombocytopenia within just one day as opposed to that five to 10 days. That gives you two points. If it's greater than 10 days or less than one day, that is one point. And if the platelet decrease is less than four days after heparin has started, where they had no previous heparin exposure, that's no points at all. So thrombocytopenia, again, platelet decrease of greater than 50%, a nadir, which means that the lowest level of platelets it goes to is 20,000 per microliter and no surgery in the past three days. That gives you two points. Again, one point in this category is where you have a decrease in platelets greater than 50% with surgery, 30 to 50% platelet decrease and a nadir less than 20,000. So 10,000 to 19,000 per microliter and no points is where the platelet decrease is less than 30% or the nadir is less than 10,000. In the thrombosis category, you get two points for a new thrombosis or skin necrosis, one point if there's a suspected thrombosis or it's recurrent, and you get no points if there's no thrombosis. And the fourth T again is alternative, two points if there's no other apparent diagnosis, one point if there's a possible other diagnosis, and no points if there is a definitive alternative diagnosis. Again, this is a little bit wishy-washy, but this is how we do with the point system. So when you add up all the points, three or less points is low probability. So if it's low probability, you basically look for other causes of thrombocytopenia. Four or five points is moderate probability, and six or more points is high probability. Then you want to get a HIT antibody test. And if that's indeterminate, you can do a functional HIT assay. So how do you treat HIT? So the important point to note here is that the mortality rate of heparin-induced thrombocytopenia type 2 is approximately 20% if it's left untreated. It's all to do with that thrombotic risk. So what is important with regards to treatment? We want to stop the heparin. The heparin is causing this. We want to stop it. So you want to avoid heparin use if past occurrence of HIT as well. So if they have a history of heparin-induced thrombocytopenia type 2, avoid heparin use. If there is thrombosis that's present, so during all of this heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, they develop a clot, you want to use a non-heparin anticoagulant for at least three months. If there's no thrombosis, 
you still want to use a non-heparin anticoagulant, but it's for less time. It's for about four weeks. And that's just because there is this increased thrombotic risk from this condition. You could give them IVIG, but oftentimes it's only used if platelets are very low. So I hope you found this lesson helpful. That was a lesson on heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. If you want more information on other hematological conditions, please check out my hematology playlist. If you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel and stay up to date on future lessons. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.